Hello, glad to have you to join us uh, this evening on a Wednesday evening. And I want to say that it's good to be in God's presence. It's good to be able to join you to hear the Word of God. Now, uh, this evening, I'm going to be talking about having a heart uh, after God. Now, uh, while I'm at it, uh, this coming Sunday morning, be sure also to join us in-house. If you cannot make it in-house, then we'll be on the Internet, on this station right here. And also, uh, Ms. Charlotte and myself will be ministering together side by side on a message called Love in Marriage, or I in Marriage, Love in Marriage. So her and I will be talking together this uh, Sunday since it is Valentine's. And also we have a special gift for every couple that comes Sunday morning in-house. You get a special gift and uh, for a married couple. And if you're not married, you still get a special gift. So we're looking forward to it. So join us. Now, uh, I want to read something to you that I have uh, I've written in times past. And uh, it's, it's a word of inspiration, but it lines up with this message. People say they love God, but in reality they are full of bitterness and hate. They can quote scriptures and yet criticize others quickly and don't hesitate. They can preach the gospel and even sing their favorite song, such as, Oh, how I love Jesus, but you know that something inside is wrong. The anointing is not there because of the hate that is within. They need to repent from their wicked ways because of hate and sin. People would know that you love God because you have loved one for another. Withdraw yourselves from them who are full of hate and, and, and are not a lover. A fountain cannot at the same time produce sweet water and bitter. A person can look spiritual on the outside, but on the inside, they have no glitter. Their lifestyle does not line up in obedience to God's word. They refuse to walk in the love of God, even though they have heard. It is impossible for you to love God when there is hatred in your heart. You will never sing or preach under the anointing when love has no part. Check up on your love walk and see if your love is full or is it low. Recharge yourself in the love of God so that his love can flow. So that means as a child of God, we need to have a heart after God. Not a heart after the pleasures of the world. Not a heart for the things that's in the world. The Bible says he that says he loves God and loves the world. The love of the Father is not in him. So let's all have a heart after God. Matthew 22 verse 37 says, Jesus saith, said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. So I'm not really talking uh, this evening about loving one another. We can talk about husband loving the wives, and wives love the husband, love your family, love your neighbor as yourself. But I believe that right now the most important thing is love the Lord thy God. If we love God with all of our heart, then it's going to be easy to love our spouse, to love our children, to love our neighbor, because God is first. Now, to deny yourself, to walk after God, you've got to deny yourself. To deny yourself is to dis disregard your flesh, your own desires, and your own will. God's will be done in your life. It's not what I want, what I desire, or what I will, but what God wants, what He desires and His will for my life. That's, that's what it means to have a heart after God. You know, John six thirty eight. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of Him that sent me. See, everybody has a will. And nobody can tell you what to do or not what to do against your will. Even God 
has a will for you. But God cannot make you go to church. He cannot make you do certain things because he's given you a will. And he's not going to violate his own word. You have a will, you can go to heaven, you can go to hell. You can love God or you don't have to love God. He said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God. You have to have, choose to love God. How can we know if we are loving God with all of our heart? How, how do we know that? Well, the, pri- the, pri- I, the priority of my life is a personal relationship with God. How do I know I love God? Because my priority in life is to have a personal relationship with Him. Number two, I place my trust in Him. And when, and, and when I am facing trials and difficulties, I put my trust in Him because I love Him. Therefore, I trust Him. Number three, I have a strong, passionate desire to obey God. See, when you love God, God hates sin, so you hate sin. You love what God loves, and you hate what God hates. So this is how you know you love God. You want to obey Him. You want to serve Him. Now, matter of fact, the Bible says there in Deuteronomy 30, 19, it says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that you and your seed may live. To choose life is to choose God. And to choose God is to choose love. You know, Smith, even in ministry, Smith Wigglesworth said, I'd rather have on my platform a group of people who are full of the Holy Spirit and are hungry than to have a group of people or ministers who are satisfied with the relationship with God. See, to know that you love God, do you still have a hunger for the Word of God? Do you still have a hunger to be with other Christians? Don't lose your hunger. So many people have lost their hunger for God's Word. See, God's Word, no matter how many years you've been hearing the Word of God, it should, you should never become familiar with the Word of God. It should be fresh. Every time you hear the Word of God, it should be fresh because you love God's Word. Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Matter of fact, Luke chapter 24, verse 32, it says, And they, the disciples, and they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? Now, uh, many years ago, as a teenager, I I used to go to a, a... non-denominational church, and, and uh, the preacher was a good preacher. He preached good. But when I left, I didn't have hardly any word. He could just give one scripture, and the whole message is preaching. But I like to give a lot of scriptures, because the scriptures is the Word of God. Every word of God is inspired, the Bible says, by the Holy Ghost. To love God, we must have a heart after Him. It's like when you love your husband or you love your wife, you have a heart after them. You want to be a blessing to them because you love them. Love always gives. God so loved the world that He gave. Love gives. So in order to, to guard your heart, don't just hang around sinners. Don't have your best friends to be sinners. Oh, you can be a friend. But don't be like one. It's okay to go. Now, I'm not much of an ocean person. I'm not much for the beach. My wife and I, we're not really much for a beach. We may go with the family sometimes, but that's not my cup of tea. I don't like to get in the water. To me, it's too cold. I can't stand the cold water. And we walk down the shore maybe. 
Now, it's okay to get into the water. If you love to get into the water, that's okay. It's okay to get into the water. But don't let the water get in you. Because if the water gets in you, you drown. It's okay to be in the world. Jesus says you're in the world. But don't be of it. Don't let the world get in you. Once the world gets in you, you lose your heart after God. Once the world gets in you, the world's ways, and the devil's trying to bring the world into the church. But I tell you what, the church is not for the world. It's for the world to come in and get saved and turn the life around. But I believe that this year, 2021, is going to be the year of the local church. I believe we're going to see more signs, wonders, and miracles. I believe we're going to see more overflow of financial blessings for those that's following after God. See, you ha- must have a heart after God. You know, uh, to love God, we must have a heart after Him. And, and so therefore, just don't... Uh, it's, it's amazing how the world can get in you if you let it. I, I remember several years ago, several years ago, might have been 20 years ago, I stopped by the uh, convenience store uh, my gas tank a little low on fuel, so I decided to get some. So I stopped into this convenience store, and I went in to pay for what I just uh, purchased. When I walked in, I paid. When got back to the car, got into the car, and Miss Charlotte said, "Oh my goodness!" He said, "She," she said, "You smell like smoke. You smell like smoke. Isn't it amazing?" I don't even smoke. I don't smoke. But yet, isn't it easy how that smoke can get into your clothes, get around you? Well, if you don't want to smell out smoke, don't hang around people that smoke. Love them. Amen. I I mean, I don't allow nobody. People I know don't smoke. I don't guess. (laughs) But if they do, I can smell them. And I don't say nothing, but you know what? I don't have cigarette trays in my house. I don't need them because I don't smoke. And those that come visit me, you don't smoke either. Because that's a standard in my life. Now, I'm not preaching you can't do this, you can't do that, but smoking will end your life early. By the way, have a heart after God. Some people get addicted to all these things. But don't get addicted to these things. You hang around people that drink, you could start drinking. You hang around people that curse, you can start cursing. You hang around people that they're loose in their lifestyle, you become loose in your lifestyle. I'm talking about having a heart after God. God doesn't want us to be hypocrites. You may say, well, I'm not going to go to that church. They're full of hypocrites. Well, don't let a hypocrite come between you and God. Let them be a hypocrite still. The main thing is you don't be a hypocrite. There's hypocrites everywhere. Well, thank God we don't have them here at this church, thank God. You know, uh, to have a heart after God... These are things that we need to do to have a heart after God. Need to be a church goer, go to church all the time. Walk in holiness, study the word. There's so many things we'll talk about, about having a heart after God. See, if you hang around God, you hang around his word and you hang around his desires you hang around his presence, and you can have a heart after God. You can live holy, but we can't live holy unless we hang around God. If you hang around God, you live holy. We hang around the Word of God, we'll live holy. And you hang around his presence, you have the joy, and you walk in holiness. Now, to have a heart after God, you must have intimacy with him. That means to pull away from your business of schedule, pull away and spend time with God, the one who saved you, the one who sent Jesus to die for you. A lot of people don't have that intimacy with God. 
And that's why they're so full of anger and hatred and no joy. The Bible says in his presence is full of joy, and the joy of the Lord is your strength. See, to have an intimacy with God, now listen to this. I have a list of things here. Knowing scriptures is not enough to have an intimacy with God. Yes, we need to know scriptures. They say that Hitler could quote the whole New Testament. But you know, he didn't know God. You can know scriptures. You can even confess scriptures. But you know what? The Bible says, Paul says that I may know him. Some people know about God, but they don't know him. To have, to, to have a heart after God, you've got to know him. I thank God I know him, not only in the scriptures, but I know him in his presence. I know, he says, my sheep hears my voice. Praying every night is not going to do it to have that intimacy with him. Now, I'm going to talk about what we do it. Prayer is good, though. Knowing scriptures is good. Attending church or having attending church is not enough. Just because you go to church is no sign you have an intimacy with God. Just because you listen to this message is no sign you have an intimacy with God. Being able to honestly say you think about God a lot during the day is not enough to have an intimacy with God. Never breaking any of the Ten Commandments is not enough to have an intimacy with God. I'm talking about having a heart after God. Singing passionately during every worship song. Raising your hands thinking you felt God is not enough to have an intimate shit with God. Intimacy. This is how you have an intimacy with God. It's called relationship. Daniel eleven thirty two, 32, but the people that do know, the word know is to have an experience of. Those that experience God shall be strong and do exploits. Those who have a heart after God. To have a heart after God is a combination. Yes, we need to learn scriptures. Yes, we need to pray. Yes, we need to go to church, but that alone, to have an intimacy see with God is to spend, to spend time with Him. Not just asking and receiving and believing God. It's just to spend time with Him. I remember Brother Hagin was teaching one time. He said um, one time he went into to the throne room. And the Lord says, well, uh, Kenneth, it's good to see you today. Do you need anything today? He said, no, Lord, I, I don't need anything today. You already healed me. And he, thank God he had the scriptures. You've already said, you sent your word healed me. He said, to be honest with you, Father, to be, to be frank with you, I just want to spend some time with you. I just want to pow with you. To fellowship. Now that's intimacy. When you can go into his presence, that's intimacy. To spend time with him. Just you and him alone. Leave the world outside. Just get along with God. Turn the TV off. Just turn to the side and go into your private place. Kneel down to whatever you do and just say, Lord, I love you. And begin to praise and begin to build that relationship with him. And to build on that relationship. So that's what we need most of all. All these other things, it's not by works. You can do all the good works, that's good. But to have an intimacy with him. You can have a, a, a marriage some people are the married, but they don't have no intimacy with each other. You need that to keep the marriage together. 
You need, husbands, you need to spend time with your wife. You need to date her. You need to date each other. You need to spend time. Not just on Valentine's Day. What happened to telling you love her? Give her notes. Open the door for her. Treat her as a weaker vessel. She's not a weaker vessel, but treat her as one. Flipping the third chapter, verse 10, the Amplified Bible says, For my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I might progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly that I may in that same way come to know the power overflowing from his resurrection. I want to encourage you this morning, or this evening, I'm sorry. I want to encourage you this evening. Don't never, never lose your hunger and thirst after God. Never lose your hunger and thirst after the Word of God. Never lose your hunger after the attendance of the church, attending the church. Never lose your hunger for following after God. The Bible says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them. Thy words was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. I want to encourage you to draw near to God. The people that walk in love, I guarantee you this, those that, that walk in the love of God, they're not easily offended. They're not critical. They're not hateful of hatred. They don't judge people that's full of hatred and offended and, and just wicked. They don't love God. Jesus says, why call me Lord and not do the things I say? Why sing songs like, oh, how I love Jesus, and then leave and, and, and curse and criticize your neighbors and, and others? Walk in the love of God. Have a heart after God. So I want to remind you, have a heart after God. Don't lose that hunger. Don't lose that hunger for the things of God. Don't lose that hunger. Jesus says, they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. See, I don't know about you, but I have a hunger to know God. You may say, well, Lord, I want more of you. Lord, give me more of you. No, that's not correct. God wants more of you. God wants more of you. Once we give him more of us, he's got He's God. He lives on the inside of you. You don't need no more of Him. He's in you. The greater one lives in you. He walks and talks in you. You have Him in your heart. He's asking for more of you. He wants to see you in that private place of intimacy. He wants to power with you. He wants to fellowship with you as He walked in the cool of the day with Adam and fellowship. God is longing to have fellowship with you. So therefore, just have fellowship with God. Draw near to God. He'll draw near to you. And I guarantee you, you'll be the most lovable person on this planet when we spend time with God. So all we need to do is build that relationship and have a heart after God. Start now. Start now. And we love you. So I want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you for your support, financial support. Remember, you're the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You cannot be defeated. God bless you. See you Sunday morning. Happy Valentine's. Thank you. Thank you for watching Living Word Church online and being part of our eFam. If you joined us on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. And if you joined us on Facebook, please like the page so you don't miss any future events or services. There are a couple ways you can support this awesome ministry. One, by sharing this video with friends and family and getting the word out. Two, by making a financial donation by clicking the Give Now button. This will help us to continue to support our community and do all God has called us to do. Thank you again for watching. God bless.